demanded uncommon nerve on the part of those who would take on the open ocean in all its fury. Dreadful as the ocean's surface may be, through the ages, seafaring men have reserved a special kind of terror for what lies beneath. told of the tentacled Scylla that ate Odysseus's men. Melville wrote of a vast pulpy mass, innumerable long arms radiating from its center, curling and twisting like a nest of anacondas. For Scandinavian sailors, the beast of beasts was called the Kraken a cunning monster that could drag men and ships down to watery graves. Many of the creatures thought to have inspired such myths have turned out to be shy and harmless. But one living Kraken has a reputation so fearsome that few would dare join it in the depths. This man is one of the few. Underwater cameraman Bob Cranston has spent more time than anyone else in the world at depth with the Humboldt or Jumbo Squid, also known as the Red Devil. These squid are something that has been left undone. It's been left undone by other cameramen because they're hard. This is really hard to do. You're out in the middle of the ocean at night, swimming around with a bunch of stuff all over you and it's a big ocean. To join the devil in its lair, Bob will descend to dangerous depths with no quick route to the surface if there's trouble. His quarry is elusive and intimidating, a beast that can reach six feet long, 
equipped with powerful arms and a sharp beak for tearing flesh, it has a bloodthirsty reputation. They look small and shy at this distance, but Bob knows they are not. These squid can be fairly aggressive. They're a major predator in this area. And my dive buddy kind of thought that was interesting, so he let the squid grab a hold of him. Next thing he knew, he had five squid attached all over him and pulling him down into the depths. And uh, they were working on taking his mask off. He came up with big welts and scrapes all around his neck. At first, the squid seemed wary of the lights. But then, curiosity gets the better of them. Soon, Bob is surrounded, and the squid grow bolder. A large one moves in to check him out. Bob risks a close encounter with the alien being, engaging it in a game that is not for the faint of heart. When these squid come up and sample me, I want them to know that I'm down here and I'm big and I'm bad, and if they want to try and take me, they're going to have a fight on their hands. I believe if you do not push them off, there'll be a bunch of them on you in no time. The jumbo squid can rapidly change its skin color back and forth between red and white, appearing to flash on and off. It's apparently a communication system, but it is, like most of the creature's life, a mystery to us. Evidently curious, exquisitely designed, the jumbo squid spends most of its time in inaccessible realms, and Bob's images represent a major breakthrough much of this behavior has never been seen before. These jumbo squid, also known as Humboldt squid, are among the least studied of a group of marine invertebrates called cephalopods. Cephalopod means head foot, and the squid's cousin, the octopus, illustrates why. Emerging directly from its head are eight powerful arms. It is surprisingly intelligent and a master of disguise. It can slip into nearly any crevice and make itself virtually invisible to predators and to its prey. A lightning strike and a fearsome looking shark is caught in a deadly grip. There will be no escape from the octopus's sucker covered arms or its paralyzing venom. Then the octopus will carry it off to shred it with its sharp hidden beak. Another relative of the squid and the octopus is the cuttlefish. Like the octopus, it is capable of brilliant displays and cunning camouflage, and also has a large and sophisticated brain. But while the octopus and the cuttlefish are typically denizens of reefs or the sea floor, the Humboldt squid is an ocean-going voyager of extraordinary grace and elegance. 
two scientists 